My Apple Podcast, your personal connection to everything Apple. Hello, everyone. Tim Brown. Welcome back to My Apple Podcast, the podcast that makes a personal connection to everything Apple. Currently, Screenium 3 is being featured in the Mac App Store as one of the best new apps available. This recent recognition may have to do with the new feature that was added recently that enables you to record your iOS screen. Let's take a look at Screenium 3. Let's start with the screen recording options and the document setup. When you first open Screenium 3, you have four options for recording your screen. Record a specific area, record full screen, record single window, and record your iOS device. These features are consistent with the leading apps in this category. Below this menu is the configurations for different aspects of the recording, including video, which includes things like frame rate, desktop, including the ability to show or hide desktop icons, audio to specify audio source, camera for the option to include FaceTime video, mouse for cursor and mouse click visualizations, and timer. The latter is something I'm not accustomed to seeing. It provides the ability to specify your recording duration. Recording your screen is fundamental to an app like this, yet document setup is equally important. Under File, you can set up a new document or composition. The composition by default is 1280 by 720. You can adjust the size by going to Composition at the top menu and selecting Canvas Size. Here, you can customize the size or enlarge or reduce it proportionately. If you go with the default size and add an item that is larger, for example, a video that is 1080p, you will be prompted to leave as is or increase the size of your composition. Next, let's examine the menu bar along the top. Starting at the top, you have templates. Templates are quick actions that enable you to add annotations and text. The video library gives you quick access to previous recordings, and the Pictures tab syncs directly to the Photos app. You can also very easily add text and annotation tools like arrows and circles. Screenium also comes with the ability to add video and audio effects, animations, and voiceovers. One feature that is unique is the Generated Speech option, which enables you to translate text into multiple languages as voice recordings, which can then be used to add multilingual narrations to your presentations. Other languages can also be added to existing audio tracks. Next, let's take a look at the composite editor below. Below the menu above, there are three main sections, the viewer to the left, the inspector to the right, and the timeline below. When a clip, video, photo, or audio is added to the timeline, the viewer and or inspector will reveal content or controls that are specific to the media selected. Below the viewer, you will find playback controls and just to the right, options to enable animations, split clips, and or delete them. Objects in the timeline also come with added controls that provide more flexibility when setting up your animations. For example, when you move the playhead to a specific location, you can hover over your clip to add a split, add a marker, or insert a still. Split is equivalent to the cut tool adjacent to the playback controls. Markers are like keyframes that mark the start and stop points of your animations. And insert still is equivalent to what is otherwise known as a freeze frame. Okay, now very quickly, I want to go ahead and check out Screenium 3 in real time so you can get a, a real sense of how this app really works. It's pretty cool. So you're looking at a blank canvas here, 720p. And I'm going to start out by changing the background. So right now it's white. I'm going to add a little gradient here. And I'm going to start out with a light gray and have it fade to white. That's pretty cool. I'm going to go ahead now and bring in some content. In this case, I have a green screen video that I did probably a couple years ago. It was a review of iMovie. I'm going to leave as is because the video is larger than 720p. It's probably 1080p. And I'm going to resize it here. So I'm just going to go ahead and grab the handles and reduce it so it fits within the size of this video, like so. So I'm going to set this up like a podcast. So I'm, on, I'm going to be on the right side, and I'm going to bring in an iPhone on the left as if I'm reviewing the iPhone. And I'm going to bring this over all the way to the corner first. And I brought this video in because I want to show you how to add chroma key to your video, one. And then two, I want to show you how to add a mask. 
First, let's start with the mask. I want to basically eliminate some of the background so I can more easily get rid of the green behind me. And you do this by going to shape and adding a square. And I'm going to basically place this square over top of me, like so. I'm going to use this square basically to create a mask. And I'm going to go to the bottom of my timeline here real quick and just bring this over so it covers you know, most of the video that I brought in. Okay. Now I'm going to go ahead and select the green screen. And I'm going to go over to the inspector here. I'm going to scroll down to where it says mask. And I'm going to click set. And then I'm going to select that square that I just brought in. I'm going to set that as the mask. And then it eliminates all the background for me, which is exactly what I want. And now with the green screen video selected, I'm going to go up to the top here and select video effects. And then I'm going to scroll up and select chroma key. And it's going to add that to the inspector on the right hand side. I'm going to select the green color to bring up the swatch. And then I'm going to use the eyedropper tool to pick out a color that will best eliminate most of the background. I'm going to choose the lighter shade here and see what that does. That seems to work. Everything's eliminated. Great. It's really that simple. Now I got a transparent background and I can start doing some other cool things. Uh, let me go ahead and bring in that iPhone that I told you I had here and I'm going to drag that to my timeline as well. Again, I'm just going to pretend like I'm doing a review of the phone, even though this was set up as a video review of iMovie. So just ignore anything I say if you happen to hear anything about iMovie. And I'm going to animate this phone. I'm going to drag it all the way over. And I'm going to actually move the phone outside the frame. And there are several different things that you can do to animate your objects all at once. Like for example, I can choose to change the opacity, the size, the scale, the position, and so forth. In this case, I'm just going to change the scale and position. So right now the position is outside the video frame. And I'm going to add a marker at this particular point. So I'm going to go ahead and hover over my mouse. And I'm going to add a marker right here. And you can see a marker appears down below where I just added the iPhone. And then I'm going to go over another second and I'm going to add another marker. That marker is going to ind indicate what the second position is going to be, which is going to be now inside my video so you can actually see it. Not only though do I want to indicate, indicate that the position has changed, I also want to indicate that the size has changed. So I want the phone to also come in to be larger. So now when the animation kicks in, it's going to go from left to right, from small to large. Let's go ahead and play it back. I'm Tim Brown. Welcome back to my Apple podcast. For this episode, I want to focus on... I That's essentially how the animations work. I can do the same thing with the opacity as well. Now let's go ahead and play around with some text. Uh, I showed you before this template option. And template option is really cool because you can do some really cool effects in an instant. In this case, I want to add some text. So I'm going to go up here and scroll down to some of the text options. There are a lot of fun options here. I think maybe I'm going to go with uh, hmm, maybe fancy flying text light. So I'm going to select that. and It's going to bring up a menu here. and I'm just going to add my Apple Podcasts. And I'm going to have it fan in along the bottom the way it, it appears there in the preview. It's kind of cool. I usually don't do stuff like that, so this might be something new for me. And I'm going to have it come in right after the iPhone comes in. Let's go ahead and play it back. Apple Podcast. For this episode, I want to focus on iMovie and all the latest updates that came with See, iOS pretty cool. Another nice template option is the ability to drag a circular or rectangular mask over your video so that you can focus just on one section. So check this out. I'm going to go ahead and go back to the beginning. So right as the phone comes in, I'm going to bring in this round mask that will focus just on the phone. So the way you do that is you go up to templates once again, and I'm going to scroll back up top and I'm going to choose that circular mask tool right there. And as you can see, it places it over my video. I'm going to select set. And then I'm going to go ahead and choose what I want to cover with this circle. In this case, I want to choose the phone. 
I'm gonna bring it over right there. And what that's going to do is actually focus on the phone exclusively. Click OK. As you can see down below, the circle just came in right where I wanted it to come in. So you can see now when I play back, I now have a circle that comes in that just focuses just on the phone and then fades out and comes back in. As you can see, fair range of things that you can do here with Screenium 3. It's a fun application. Just spend some time playing around with it. You will have a ball. It's really great and there's a reason why it's being highlighted in the Mac App Store right now. I hope this episode was helpful. My name is Tim Brown. You can always check me out at myapplepodcast.com, but you also can find me on Twitter and YouTube. Until then, see you next time.